Hello everyone, Ian here at Able City in Burbank, and today we're going to check out the Sound Devices 633. The 633 is a field recorder and sound mixer, and allows us to take different types of audio signals and input them into the unit, record them internally to a compact flash card and an SD card, and it also allows us to send that off to a camcorder. Now the clear advantage here is that most camcorders traditionally just have two channels of audio input. So that meant that if you use multiple microphones, you had to mix them and then send that off as a mix to the camera. With this piece of equipment, we can do that. However, the clear advantage here is that now for every microphone that we input to it, we can record it discreetly. I also want to take a look at some options as to how we put signals into our camcorders. Before we get into signal routing, I wanted to show you the redundancy that's built into the unit for power. Here I have a power supply that comes with it uh, plugged in through the Hiroshi connector here. I'm going to go ahead and unplug that, and you'll notice on the back I have Sony L-type camcorder batteries, and on the input side I have the ability to input AA batteries. So you have triple redundancy for power here. Uh, almost impossible to run out of power with this thing. And also, just little touches that make it uh, really field friendly. There's a little leash here on our cap so it can't lose it. And a nice big knurled tie down knob. So if we have to do these kinds of things in cold weather with gloves, it's easy and fast to do so. From operator's point of view, on the left hand side of the 633 are the inputs for various types of audio inputs. On the top row we have three XLR3 females. This will take the uh, line level or mic or a phantom level and on the bottom is the TA3s which are line level inputs and generally speaking the way that this would be set up is that microphones uh, like phantom 48 power microphones would go into the XLR3 connectors and the TA3s would be reserved on the bottom for lavalier inputs. Now these can all be switched around and if we go into the uh, menus you can see that there are a, a wide selection of different choices for how we set up these inputs. From operator's POV on the right hand side of the 633 are the outbound signals. Now we have their traditional three pin XLR males for outbound. Again, we can make that a line level, but notice also it's labeled as AES. And this is uh, something that is really nice in this unit. AES allows us to output actually four discrete channels of audio. We'll get into that in just a moment, but we also have the the TA3s over on this side as well, which are aux outputs. Also notice we have the return. This is the return audio from a camcorder. This is the mini connector that will allow us to monitor the audio being sent to the camera. And next to it is a 5-pin limo. This is the uh, traditional uh, time code input and output for audio recorders. And also we have our stereo jack for our headset. And behind this little flap here is where the compact flash and the SD media would go. The 633 is really a machine where you can set it up to work the way you want it to. And because it has that much flexibility in its functions, it's hard to make general statements about it on a lot of levels. But I'm going to make some general comments on the front panel here. On the left hand side is your mixing console. So you'll notice that diode number one is lit up because I have just one microphone coming into it right now. And I have my gain control, my fader, and that's true of all six tracks that come into the machine. I can toggle to track one, and you'll see on my meters it's now gone into a menu that is exclusively describing the attributes of channel one right now. So for example, I can go in and I can tell it what type of input to expect. I have a high pass frequency uh, adjustment here. I can go in and change various parameters about how I'm going to monitor the audio itself. And that is in with conjunction to the switch down here, which allows me to see either return from camera or to listen to the audio in the 633. Also notice that in the meters, just like a lot of other settings in this machine, they are fully customizable. And I'm just scrolling through the uh, sort of the default settings or meter settings uh, that 
came out of the box with this machine. The only thing I've really done here is gone in on track one and I've renamed it. We can name every track in the machine and that information gets carried through in metadata with the files. Right now it says ME66 because I have a uh, Sennheiser plugged into it. I put the Sony F5 on my card here to talk about AES audio. The F5 and the F55 are a generation of camcorders that now are starting to feature AES audio input. Now the advantage of this is that over one three pin XLR, where we traditionally had one line level or mic level input to the camcorder, we now have two discrete tracks. This is also digital audio, so it's bypassing the internal audio components of a camcorder and going directly to our media. So if you do this in combination with recording to the 633, you now have the best of both worlds. You've got the high quality recording of the 633 and you have the flexibility of the three discrete or four discrete channels of audio going into your camcorder. So I've asked Armin and Jerry to come sit in for me on a mock interview. And what I have are Sennheiser lavaliers on them each. And they're being fed in discreetly to the 633. I also have that ME66 Sennheiser uh, mic over top of them. And that's being fed in as well. So three tracks uh, going into the 633. And then I'm taking three tracks of AES to the F5. So in both cases, I now have three tracks of discrete audio going to 633 and to the Sony F5. I brought the interview sequence into Final Cut and I'm gonna play this one little section here where Jerry, seated on the right-hand side, starts to recount his Halloween. You'll notice that he inadvertently uh, starts to tug at the fabric on his shirt, causing microphone problems. Okay. Um, I didn't do much on Halloween day. I just so if I was stuck with this situation where I had only two mics, one going into each channel of my camera, I now would be faced with a big problem trying to recover that audio. Essentially, all I would have is the audio from Armin seated on the left and be able to try to patch in those two and try to make them work. Luckily, I had the third microphone, and because I was recording discrete tracks on the 633, I'm now able to go in and recover that clean track. Because I also sent this AES audio to the F5, I now have those discrete tracks recorded into my SYS card. I've opened up Wave Agent, which is a free download from Sound Devices, and I brought the uh, audio from the CF card on the 633 into it, so I can take a look at the different tracks that I've recorded. And over here, you'll notice that I have written out uh, the different mics. This is the track three, is the ME66. That's the uh, name that I assigned to track one on the 633 uh, dirt, you know, before I started the recording session. And here Jerry and Arm and I added in manually in uh, this program. So what I've done is I've come in here and I can make a note in here that there is noise on Jerry's mic and this is the time code where it is. So what I want to do is I'm going to bring up Jerry's mic which is right here and I just want to listen to it. Halloween day. Um. And clearly you can hear that noise he's producing from scratching his shirt. So I'm going to go back to uh, that time code and this time I am going to play it back listening to this track which is the ME66. I'm going to bring that up. On Halloween day. Um, I didn't do much on Halloween day. Not and as you can see, uh, the ME66 completely covers us from that uh, problem we have with the lavalier on Jerry. So now that I have this, I can use this in my post edit and I can eliminate any of those possible noises. And this is a real benefit to having the multi-track recording in the 633. And as an added benefit, because the uh, 633 will output uh, AES audio, I also had the benefit of having a camera that would take in three discrete tracks of audio as well. So in this scenario, I could correct it on both sides, uh, but with 633, I have up to six tracks, so now I can protect myself with six discrete inputs. The Sound Devices 633 is just part of our expanded audio offerings in our New York and Los Angeles locations. Please feel free to stop by and check them out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.